Okay, so this is going to be a quick run through of something I'm working on involving Air 2.0, native processes, and handbrake on the Windows system. So what we've got here is the basic beginnings of, of this project. And um, if we run the project, we'll compile this thing. And you can see I've got it, it laid out here. Uh, in a certain way. Uh, this top part gives you all the functionality to run and monitor uh, Handbrake. And what I've got here is a, an option for you to locate the Handbrake command line interface on your particular system. So you can download, if you go to uh, handbrake.fr, you can download both the um, you know the normal GUI version or you can also grab the command line interface version of Handbrake. So the GUI version is going to come with the command line interface, but you might just want to grab the CLI um, if you don't already have that. So this will save uh, this setting whenever you, uh, you locate it, so you won't have to find it each time. Basically, you can run the thing or stop the thing, kill the process whenever you want, uh, this little output window here is going to capture output from the handbrake process and display it for the user. Um, the idea here is that you're going to have a watch folder and a destination folder and different arguments that you can pass into handbrake CLI for each particular preset that you choose. A preset is going to be uh, you know, one of a number of list items here. Uh, save presets will appear here. I, I don't have the, the preset functionality working yet or the ability to, to edit those, but um, I do have the thing actually talking to handbrake, processing files, transcoding, and uh, functioning properly. And that's the important bit and the bit that I'm quite excited about. But basically, the whole idea for this is you'd install it on a server and you'd be able to give people access to a share or you know an FTP directory or something like that where they could just dump files. Handbrake will transcode a lot of different file types. So I wanted something that people would be able to just grab from their camera, throw on the server, it would transcode it, move it into its proper place depending on the project. So that's where this comes in. Each preset's gonna have a specific folder to watch in a specific destination folder to publish to. Um, the arguments are probably going to be more or less the same for each project, but you've got the ability to, you know, define the arguments, uh, you know, whether it's width and height or particular transcoding settings for each particular preset. So uh, what I've got here is I've got it pointing to a file uh, that's from a flip video camera. And the destination folder that I've got is just this destination folder here, which you can see is empty. So let's go ahead and try to run this guy. See, it begins the encode and it starts running through our processes here. And this is gonna take a little bit of time. You can see we're at 13%. So let's go and have a look at some of this stuff over here. Um, I found a few things that you're going to probably need to do when you're working with uh, Air 2.0 and native processes for the extended desktop. Um, it'll package it, well you have to package it yourself manually as an executable file using using ADL or uh, ATL afterwards. Um, after you generate your, your Air file, you can see here I've got an Air and I've, I've processed an executable out of it as well. Um, but that comes later after you're completely finished with it. You can totally do all your debugging from uh, Flash Builder. Some important things, you've got to make sure to set supported profiles tag in your, uh, your XML file here, your descriptor XML, to extended desktop. I've got it set to both extended desktop and desktop. I'm not quite sure. I don't think you actually need to have that in there. But extended desktop is quite important. Uh, I've got a number of things to handle, a uh, local SQL database here, uh, configuration files here, which is basically a text file, and, uh, you know, different argument strings. Here we have uh, the actual native process stuff.
So we've got a native process and native process startup info. Uh, these are both important. If we go down here, you can see I'm kind of hard coding uh, the stuff in here because I haven't written the stuff for presets yet. And you can see the argument string here that I'm passing into to handbrake when you run this thing is quite lengthy. Uh, the way that you process arguments using native processes in error is that each particular um, argument has to be input to the um, uh, native process startup info arguments uh, property. Um, and this, this has to be a vector object. So you've got to create a vector of strings and each particular string needs to be one of these particular arguments here. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm basically creating a process args vector. I'm typecasting it to string. And uh, then I create an array in which I split out this whole string of arguments here that I'm passing into handbrake. And I split it out by spaces. So each one of these guys has to be its own uh, vector index. So this is a vector index here, this is one, this is one, this is one, and so forth. You might think that, you know, for the uh, dash f argument here, that you would have to say dash f space mp4, and that would be one vector string, but that's not how it works. This has to be two separate entries, two separate arguments being passed in. And if I do run the debugger, you'll be able to actually see this. Let's go and put a breakpoint there for now. So <clears throat> when we get to the end, uh, I've got a bunch of uh, event listeners going on here for different things. Um, it's going to output various items. If I hit stop, it'll, it'll say killed by user. Uh, if it ends on its own, it'll just end in code. And, um, you know, any of the native process output stuff is going to be read in through here, reading UTF bytes, um, and just passing that on through to my output label, just appending text there. So let's have a look and see if this is completed yet. Okay, so you can see um, what we've got here is uh, it goes through the, the muxing here, and it ends the encode. And you can see what's nice too is it it estimates you know, how much longer you have for any of these processes. So let's close that out and open up our destination folder. And there we go. So you can see that it actually has created this file for me um, through the air application. All right, so let's go in and just have a quick look at that debugger to check out those, uh, those arguments and how they're sort of, uh, how they appear here. So I'll expand this a bit and let's run our program again. Okay, hit run. All right, so here's our arguments array, which is just a basic array. And the reason I, I, I put it into an array first of all the different pieces is because uh, you, or at least I didn't find a way to be able to split a vector. Uh, split seems to only work on array, doesn't seem to work on a vector, so I used an array and then a for loop to loop over those items and just process everything into, into a vector. So here is my vector, pro process args, we can see here that it's a, it's a vector, uh, type cast a string, and then we have all of our different bits and pieces here. So you can see, for instance, you know, our input here is two separate arguments dash i and the actual string, same thing for the output file, dash o and then the string. Entirely separate. This this kind of tripped me up a little bit. Um, I was initially trying to put stuff in as, you know, dash o and then the string all as one argument, but that's just not how it works. So, you know, in closing, I'm, I'm really excited about, uh, you know, what we're going to be able to do with, with Air 2.0. And, you know, this project is going to be really good for me to, to get a grip on uh, working with native processes on this platform.